In this problem, we're asked to find the area of kite A, B, C, D. And as you can see here, we have the kite on a coordinate plane, and we have all of our points labeled. Um, point A is at the origin, 0, 0. Point B is at 2, 6. Point C is at 6, 6. Point D is at 6, 2. And I also have the diagonals marked and the diagonals cross at point Z, which is 4, 4. And the question is asking us to find the area, which means we want to know what is the total space that fills in the shape here. So since I don't know how to find the area of an entire kite, what I can do is break it up into triangles. Uh, there is more than one way we can do this. As you can see, there are four smaller right triangles. Um, I could use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the area. Or I can just take the top piece as a smaller triangle and the bottom piece as the larger triangle, find the area of both of them and add them together. So that's what I'm going to do. So if I just want to focus on this top piece, um, in order to find the area of this triangle, I want to take the base times the height and divide it by 2. So since the base is not in a way where I can count it, I'm going to actually use the distance formula to find the base. And the good thing about finding the base between B and D is that is the base for the smaller triangle and the larger one. So I only have to do that one one time. So right here I'm going to find the base of both triangles, which I already said was BD. I have both points uh, written here. I have the first point labeled X1 and Y1 because that's my first point. I have the second one is X2 and Y2. And these, again, are just for labeling purposes, just to make sure I put them at the right place. Um, here's my distance formula. So I'm going to take X2, which is 6. I'm going to plug that in. So I'm going to have 6 minus 2 squared. I'm just literally plugging the numbers in. Don't forget to bring anything down. Y2, which is 2, minus 6 squared. And now I'm just going to do the order of operations. 6 minus 2 is 4 squared. 2 minus 6 is a negative 4 squared. And notice it's inside the parentheses. Here I have 4 squared plus 4 squared. So I have 16 plus 16 and I get the square root of 32. Now that is the distance from B to D. Um, I'm not going to turn it into a decimal because then that will leave some of my answer out. This has the entire answer so I'm going to leave it there and hopefully when I find the area later and I start multiplying maybe the radicals will simplify out. So next we are going to find the height of both the smaller triangle and the larger one. We're going to start by finding the height of the smaller one, which is C all the way to Z. Now I'm going to find the height of triangle B, C, D by finding the distance between C and Z. Remember when you're finding the height of a triangle, it needs to be at a perpendicular intersection, which this is. So C, Z is at 6, 6 and 4, 4. So I'm going to plug those two points into the distance formula to find the height of that triangle. Then I'll be able to do base times height divided by 2, and I'll have the height of just that triangle. So let's plug these in. I have 4 minus 6 squared plus 4 minus 6 squared. And then I'm just going to work it out. So let's see here. I have um, negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. I end up with 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8. Next, I'm going to find the height of triangle ADB. And that is from A all the way to Z, which I have here, 0, 0, and 4, 4. Again, I have my first point and my second point labeled appropriately so that I can plug them in and do the order of operations. 
So here I have 4 minus 0 plus 4 minus 0, which is going to leave me with 4 squared plus 4 squared, which is 16 plus 16, which again leaves me with the square root of 32. So as you can see, all of my distances did not work out to be whole numbers. They're all decimals, which are our radicals. If I was to type in the square root of 32 into a calculator, I would get a decimal. So notice I did not convert any of them to decimals. I want to leave them as a radical because when I find the area, which is the base times height divided by 2, they may simplify out. So that's what we're going to work on next. We're going to find the area of this triangle and then this one. Next, we're going to find the area of triangle BCD, which is the smaller triangle at the top. We know that the base from B all the way to D was the square root of 32, and the height from Z to C was the square root of 8. So the area of a triangle we know is the base times the height divided by 2. So we're literally going to plug in the base, plug in the height, and do the math. So here we have the square root of 32 times the square root of 8 divided by 2. And since this is a radical times a radical, I'm literally just going to multiply these numbers. And I actually get the square root of 256 divided by 2. And then I'm going to keep simplifying. Well, what is the square root of 256? 16. And what is 16 divided by 2? 8. So the area of that top triangle is 8. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to find the area of the bottom triangle. And then finally, we're going to add those two pieces together to find the area of the entire kite. Next, we're going to find the area of triangle BDA, which is the bottom one. Again, we're going to take the base times the height and divide it by 2. The base of this triangle is the same as before. It's the square root of 32. Just so happens that the height is also the square root of 32. So when I plug those numbers in, it's going to be the square root of 32 times the square root of 32, which whenever you have the same exact radical times the same exact radical, they pretty much cancel out, and you're left with just 32. And what is half of 32? 16. So if I take the area of both triangles, first triangle, the area was 8 units squared. The second triangle, the area was 16 units squared. I'm going to add them together to get a final answer of 24 units squared. That is the area of the entire kite. And I 